Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Namaste Experience. I believe it's Tuesday. Am I correct about that? Yes. All right. We are in a timeless space. It's hard to know what day it is. It's a cool day here at, in Ahihik. We think that the rainy season might be right around the corner, which is refreshing from the heat that we have been having. And we're going to start off with our daily affirmation. And so let me go ahead and put this up on the screen. The great declaration, rather. So join me in this and really feel this. These are not just words. This is an experience that we have to declare. So here it goes. I choose to know that I am infinite spiritual consciousness embodying all goodness, all grace, and the eternal glory of God. This is the song I will sing, the sermon I will preach, the lesson I will teach, and until full realization comes, this my theme, my motif. It is the silver cord of truth running through every message I deliver. Amen, and may it be so. This is an adaptation of something that I read in one of Joel Goldsmith's books. And it's something that we declare, certainly with our words, but much more than our words. It's something that we declare with our lives, the way that we live and interact and join and all the choices that we make to choose that I am that. And to realize, as the lesson from A Course in Miracles says today, that when I am healed, guess what? I'm not healed alone. No, when I'm healed, when I choose this, I choose it for all. How does this work? I haven't the slightest idea. But I don't have to know. But I can have the confidence that this is true, that we are one, in other words. There's only one thing going on. And if I can choose to live and to breathe and to flow within that oneness, grace and joy and happiness is automatic. So that's where we begin. Vicki, we're really happy that you're uh, feeling better. It's wonderful to see your vibrant self with us, and you'll be sharing in just a moment. But I want to start off by reading a little something from the impersonal life. I've been rereading this, and you know, these obviously came from our morning sessions. Uh, I think this was primarily when I was in the anchor hold. I, I wrote these and shared them every day as part of our morning sessions. And it's good to circle back. It's good to come back to the core of who I am. That's what all these lessons are about. So let me share this. I am expressing and extending continuously beneath the surface of what you think you see or believe yourself to be. Extending continuously beneath the surface of everything, who you think you are, what you think you're here for. Beneath the surface, there is a river, which we'll hear about in a moment. I am the very current that draws all reality irresistibly toward the infinite ocean of grace that you sometimes call heaven. You can deny the current, but it will never deny you. That's good news. And that is why love is guaranteed for all. Imagine a mighty river, greater and stronger than any you've ever seen before, flowing beneath the surface of the earth. You cannot see it with your eyes, but you can feel the river's effect, though you do not realize that that's what you're feeling. It is like a magnet pulling you and drawing you toward itself. I like that image, a magnet that always pulls us to ourselves. Though subtle, it's also the most persistent feeling you've ever known calling you night and day to dig a hole so deep that you finally reach the river. And when you do, you'll find such joy, and without any thought, you'll dive in. 
and the current will take you where it wills. It is my will, the will of I am, that you dive in now. Do not wait. The river is not beneath the earth, nor is it in the sky. The river I speak of is within you, just as the kingdom of God is within you. So why are you waiting? Dive. I like that image of, of feeling the current, that energy that we always know is there, though we can't quite identify it. Even in the years when we thought we were lost or the times in which we thought we were going the opposite direction, still that feeling, that energy, that current was drawing us, though beneath the surface. The only other thing I would add to this is that at some point, once we have dug deep and dived into that river flowing beneath the surface, there does come a point where it bursts through the surface. And suddenly this mighty river, greater than any river you've ever seen before, is flowing straight toward the ocean, but above the surface so that all can see, all can witness. And even more will dive in because now they know and they know through you. This is what we're doing together. Every day we come together, we dig a little bit deeper. We allow that current to take us a little bit more. We let go of the resistance, the hold back, the worry about what will happen if, what will happen if I give myself totally to this current? What will happen to my life, to my children, to my job, all of those things if I really surrender? I'll tell you what will happen. You'll be happy. A happiness that is beyond this world, though, not a happiness that's contingent or or connected with anything of this world. We talked about this yesterday, being happy even when we're not, even when we're challenged, even when there are things going on in our lives. There is that level of joy, divine joy, as we realize that happiness is God's will for us but a happiness that is beyond it all. So once again, when I'm healed, I'm not healed alone. Throwing ourselves into the river is throwing ourselves into the experience of oneness, of wholeness. It's the only thing that's left. I mean, collectively, we've done everything that there is to do, haven't we? Maybe it's A, maybe it's Jeff, maybe it's Vicky, but we've all done collectively what we need to do. Now, the only thing that's left to do is to dive. And I know that you're ready for that, otherwise you wouldn't be here. You feel it. Maybe some of you are still holding back, like, what will happen? Dive. I'm looking at the daily word. It says, world peace. I am part of the endless flow of the peace of God. The, oh, that's perfect. The endless flow of the peace of God. That feels right to me. So I think that's a good place to start. So Vicki, we're going to turn it over to you now and, and feel the endless flow of grace that's always flowing through you in every moment. Good morning. Good morning, Brother James. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. What a big, beautiful family. Thank you, and I just want you to know I feel so much better today because no matter what we call it, the reason we meet is healing because the only thing that is healing in me and in all of us, we've joined together, is who we think we are. I love that you use that declaration this morning. It's my favorite one. The song we sing, the lesson we teach, the sermon we preach, we're teaching only one thing, that we are the beloved divine child of God. That's what we are. And everything else has been the cover-up. And all the things we go through are about taking off the masks of those cover-ups. That's what it means to dive deeply into the truth. It's finding what our cover-ups have been. So when I, like today, I, I got sick this week, you know, with COVID. So it was a good chance. So the, I would say the lens that I've been looking at is with honesty. The way that we demask and take off all the coverings that hide our divinity is by getting very honest with ourselves. And sometimes it's a help when we get sick 
because it, it requires us to be more honest with ourselves of where we are. So I, I found for me, sometimes I overcommit. I end up doing too many things. Some of you know that. I can, <laughs> I can be very dizzy busy and I seem to enjoy it. <laughs> But and a lot of times that's okay and it's good, but sometimes we can do that because we're avoiding something else. So getting stopped dead in my tracks. My father used to say, "Kid, slow down to nothing, kid." He's, and he'd mean it too. Then he racing in circles around everything. Slow down to nothing. <clears throat> and sometimes the busyness can be a cover up for feelings. Yes. The better gift is to let those feelings in. So last night I let a lot of feelings in. You know, a lot of, I really do miss Teddy. It's like you guys do here. It's like, it was really fun having him back in my life. It was kind of even harder having him back for a while and then letting him go. But realizing, no, nobody goes anywhere. Like, get a grip, <laughs> you know. But for a moment, there are tears that come from feeling alone. But is it feeling alone because Teddy's not there? No. It's that same, it's that underlying sense of separation from God that's coming up. It's that feeling of really being alone. And if it comes up because, oh, I think a physical body isn't here, and and that's what allows those tears to rise. Well, so be it. But the honesty comes from letting the tears arise and not having a solution. Like just letting them come up. I think that's why I feel so much better today. I just let everything come up. Like this is about honesty, emotional honesty, honesty at every level with ourselves. And the willingness for me to remember to ask all the time, I'm grateful there's a Holy Spirit that I can ask. I need that kind of help. I need that kind of assistance because on my own, I can run in circles and then collapse. But with the Holy Spirit's help, if I, if I keep remembering to ask, I won't run in circles and collapse. I'll run in circles and soar and I'll bring everyone with me. That's what I really know. So the, the forgetting to ask is another way of being dishonest. It's another way of saying, oh, I know what to do. And it's like not living in that great openness of, I don't know what to do, show me. I don't know what to do, show me. And not take for granted yesterday's instructions are going to be good for today. Every day is new instruction. Every day we dive into the truth of who we are. And that, that lens of honesty, of being with whatever is, being with myself, being with whatever comes up. Yesterday I was thinking, oh my God, this is like um, being in, uh, in a landmine, you know, where they bury grenades, like, oh no, everywhere I step is like an emotional whoop. <laughs> you know, oh no, I'm not in the house anymore. Oh no, Teddy's not here. Oh no, my mother's not here. It was like, oh God. <laughs> but that's all right. If those landmines are, are places of belief and separation, then let them do their work. These are the places I believe that have reality for me. And the love of God, present love of God, present communion in spirit in who I am, and resting in that is where life is, is where direction is. So if there are landmines still buried around me, I'm, I'm excavating them today. I'm not letting one go by without my willingness to let it, okay, I, I'll find it. It doesn't have to explode in my face. I'll bring it up and let the Holy Spirit show me how to open up to it. So it's all about healing. It's all about being honest with ourselves. And it's humbling. And it's humbling to stay very present and not to use yesterday's instructions, to let every day be a new day of grace and jumping in the fire you can't jump in with all cover-ups on. It's really about letting all the cover-ups and all the identities and the masks and the roles, let them all go every day and be fresh. And if there's a gift in having COVID, it sure is this, because every day it's fresh and there's no nothing, nothing to do except to be present. And the truth, and my son said it to me, he said, Mom, 
this is the life we wanted you to have. You don't have anything to do but be present. <laughs> but now you're just finding it out. And I said, oh, all right, Jenny. I don't have anything to do but be present. He said, yeah. And he said, isn't that what you tell other people? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so anyway, I'm celebrating that we are being healed together. We come to this Zoom every day and wherever we're guided every day to join in that one purpose of healing, to let it be every breath we take, every song we sing, that this is our life, that we are living in our divinity under any name we give it. We're willing to look at any landmines or that we might step on and let them do their work, uncover unconscious, un unfelt, feelings of misbelief, that's what they are. Oh, this is a place I believe the illusion was real and now I don't have it and I'm blue. No. The state of communion is a natural state of joy without opposite. What you were talking about to me in the beginning. It isn't a state of joy that comes and goes. It's a constant state in the face of every seeming loss or seeming disruption, seeming sickness, seeming whatever the illusion of form may take for us. These are choices we've made. And in getting on us, we're learning to make better choices, that we choose our divinity over some role we take or some party we give or some situation we think is going to bring us some kind of happiness. When we stay on us in that communion within, we stay in that, in that grace, that current of grace, of our divinity and no matter where we go and everyone we bring with us becomes part of that grace and, and feels that grace and that's what healing is that we recognize that grace as who and what we are and who and what each other are and we share that and celebrate it so getting on is a great way to get there so I'm enjoying having COVID I'm enjoying <laughs> I can't Why wait. Not? Why not? I can't wait. I, so I visit people on my balcony, though. <laughs> so my sister comes by and we visit. <laughs> like Romeo and Juliet. It's like, but whatever it is, we're in a healing mode together. We benefit. When we healed, we're not healed alone. We really benefit by one another's acceptance of the truth for ourselves, by one another's letting go of our masks, letting go of where we think our happiness lies and finding that just feeling those feelings of sadness for a moment delivers us to that river of grace that is our natural spirit, our natural identity. Amen. Amen. So thank you. Thank you, Brother James. Thank you, my great family. I love you all. Well, you're on fire today. Thank you, Vicki. That, that COVID is doing a good job by you. <laughs> you know, and I was thinking as, as you were sharing that it, it comes down to a choice between allow or block. We're going to allow these things to come up, look at them, feel them, or we're going to block them. The, the, the soul, the, the, the I am presence within us allows everything to come up so that we can look at it clearly and heal. And once again, when I'm healed, I'm not healed alone. That allows me to be more present to others or I can block it. One of the reasons why uh, everything is coming up now is when you're, you're sick, it's harder to block. It's, it, it, the defenses aren't as high. You've taken the armor off. So now it's, it's all, you know, you step on a land, line, land mine and something from the past is triggered, but now it's triggered to heal. You're not gonna block it. You're gonna feel it and just take it in. And that's a grace. That's something that's for all of us. The other image that I was getting as you were speaking, Vicki, we, we talk about diving deep into that river, that current that's always beneath the surface. But I remember once I, I went hand gliding and it was a, uh, a tandem I because I'd never done it before. So I'm attached to another man who knows what he's doing and you jump off a cliff. The one thing you're told never do. <laughs> Don't ever jump off a cliff, but that's what you have to do. And then, but you have to trust that this other person that you're attached to knows what he's doing, knows how to fly this thing. 
and you have wings, these huge wings, and you jump off the cliff and you begin to fly. And you, you slowly start to go down, but then what happens? You catch a thermal, you catch the, the updraft, and what do you do? You go in circles like this as you stay within the tube of that updraft and it pulls you higher and higher and higher above the landscape. And you trust, you know that you're safe because this one has you, kind of like walking the plank. The Holy Spirit's always right next to you saying, don't worry, it's not real. Once again, for those of you who don't know what the plank is or didn't quite understand that the other day, I'm, I'm really into virtual reality glasses. Well, I'm realizing actually that it's virtual, virtual. Re this is virtual reality. The, the glasses are actually virtual, virtual reality. But it, it is very scary when you're going up that elevator about 100 floors and it, and it looks like and it feels like you're in a real elevator. You look around, you see the buttons and your mind believes it. Even though you don't, you know what I mean? You know it's not real, but your mind still believes it. And when that door opens and you see that plank and you hear a creak beneath your feet as you step out, it is scary as shit. <laughs> I've done it 20 times at least, and it still scares the bejesus out of me. <laughs> Even though I know I can't fall, I know nothing's going to happen to me. And that's what this world is. Nothing can happen to you. Because the truth within you is whole. The truth within you is perfect and wholly protected. And the Holy Spirit is always right there with you saying, don't worry, I'm right here. I'm not going to let you go anywhere. Or you're jumping off that cliff and you're attached to the one who knows how to work the wings and find that updraft to take you up to the highest height. We're safe. We're good. Even when things come up like what Vicky is going through, we get sick. We have a tragedy happen in our lives, whatever it may be. It gives us the opportunity, as you were saying, Vicki, to dig up those landmines so that they don't explode in our face. That's what we do. Every day, that's what we do. So, I'm kind of feeling to reach out to Calico. So, Calico, if you're out there and you'd like to share something, you want to tag on to what you've heard, we'd love to hear from you. Yeah, I, I would love to, James. And I, I you know, I thank, I thank you for these conversations that just allow me to go deeper into my understanding of love. <clears throat> and yesterday, there were some questions about sickness. And I just need to say, and again, I'm coming from A Course in Miracles. That's all I do. Um, and sickness is really only of the mind period. It may appear to be affecting me physically. And the only time it's a problem is when I am suffering. So if my mind is suffering in any way, and Vicki, thank you for the honesty. I say all caps, honesty. We have to get honest. You know, what's bothering me? And, you know, during my process, oh, my God, you know, I was I was raised to be a good girl. You don't have those thoughts about someone else. Well, the reality was I had those thoughts about other people. They were not pleasant thoughts. And it's like I had to get honest with every single thought and dig it up, unearth it and go, no, nope, the reality is this is what I'm really feeling. And then ask God to see it differently. It's not about sharing it to another person. It's about getting honest with myself that I'm holding on to these grievances, judgments, opinions, whatever. And then the mind starts clearing. And I just have to say, um, you know, <laughs> I hear far, when it comes to the physical body, I hear far more people suffering from things like fatigue than I do from stage four cancer. The reality is I don't suffer from stage four cancer, no suffering, but I know now it has nothing to do about focusing on the body. It has to do with focus on the mind. 
the mind is a well of discontent <laughs> until it gets cleared. And that's a course in miracles is very clear. The only sickness that you can have is in your mind. And you have to unearth all those grievances and come clean with them to God, no one else, just God and say, no, I'm thinking this about this person, or I'm thinking this about this situation. And then allow Holy Spirit to, to redefine it for you. And it will, it does. And so if anyone out there is suffering physically, I say, don't focus on the body, focus on where your mind is, where your judgments are and clear those one at a time. And it, it seems like a very long process. <laughs> All I can say, it's totally doable. It's totally doable. And then suffering becomes impossible. You know, someone else this morning at breakfast said, well, oh, there was a dog in the community that was suffering. And how do you explain that? And I said, they're suffering because you're projecting it. You're projecting it. And it's like, look in yourself, where are you suffering? Because that's why you're projecting it out on another, whether it's an animal or a human or a situation. And that's the gift of A Course in Miracles for me, because I didn't think this was ever possible. And do I see myself as a good girl now? No, not at all. I bring it all up. Whatever's in my mind, I take it to God immediately. I don't, I don't pause because I know the clarity that I get from seeing it through the eyes of love is so profound. So I just thank you for this and thank you just this, you know, morning inquiry into how is my mind today? Where is my mind today? And if I'm in that field of love, I'm just happy. It doesn't matter what the script looks like. The script is just a script. I'm watching a movie. I'm going to go out and get popcorn. <laughs> anyway, thank you so thank much. You, all of you. <laughs> we're happy no matter what, no matter what we're going through. But we do have to, as Calico and Vicky both said, we have to dig those things up and look at them, heal them, bring them into the light, not just keep them buried. You know, I was just looking up the words to another great Peter Gabriel song. By the way, I, I thought of Peter Gabriel because uh, the Red Rain video, as of this morning, just topped 10,000 views. So it's doing great. Lots and lots of people watching it. But this, uh, this song is called Digging in the Dirt. And there, one little section says, I'm digging in the dirt to find the places I got hurt. Open up the places. I got hurt. That's what we're doing. But we do it joyfully. It's not somber. Even when we're digging up something that stirs us and, and, and we have to revisit. Vicki, for example, having to move through the loss of her husband, her mother, whatever it is that comes up in the moment. You can feel that, but you can do it joyously because you know that you're releasing it into the light. It's like you know, my, not long ago, well, I guess it was for Christmas, I got my granddaughter the birthday present of this uh, Christmas present of um, this little thing, and it, it had four or five uh, butterfly, butterfly chrysalises, is that what you would call it? Mm -hmm. And, and you, you, you put it in this little tiny little mesh cage, and then there's a little... Um, food thing that you put in there. And then you can watch as these butterflies a few days later emerge from their cocoon. And then they're in there for a little while, but then you have to turn it over so that they can fly away. Then you can watch as these butterflies fly into the air. Well, that's what's happening to us right now. The cage has been opened. You can fly. Nothing is holding you back but your own mind. As Calico said, just be brave. You're going to be fine. When you get up there into the highest part of that tree, you're going to be so happy you did. And there you have it. Thank you, everyone. We do have a minute or two if anyone has a question. 
Does anyone have a question that would help clarify this lesson? If you're in the Zoom, just hit the button for your hand to go up. And anyone here at Namaste have a question? Anybody in the Zoom room? Are we good? I think this is pretty straightforward. Yes, Catherine? Um, I'm not sure whether this is my imagination. She's not sure if it's her imagination or what. But, um, did you mention uh, the saint from anyway, Cupertino? Did I mention John of Cupertino yesterday or the day before? Yeah, I did mention John of Cupertino. Speaking of flying, he was the flying saint. He would go into these these ecstatic states. Whenever he would pray, he would he would go into ecstasy and he would lift off the earth. And they didn't know what to do. They actually thought he was possessed by a demon. That doesn't make any sense, but that's so they did an exorcism, but they made the mistake of putting a statue of the Blessed Mother next to him. And he would look at that and still go into ecstasy even during the exorcism. So they, they took him to the Pope. Maybe the Pope knows what to do. And in right in front of the Pope, there he goes right up to the top of the ceiling. We can fly, each one of us. There's nothing holding us back. I don't know if you're going to lift off the ground like Joseph of Cupertino. By the way, there's a beautiful music called The Reluctant Saint, a very old movie, and it stars Maximilian Schnell as Joseph of Cupertino. It's a lovely movie. Anyway, thank you for that. Okay. Let's do, okay, we'll do our final prayer of protection since I went to all the trouble to type out the new version. So please join me in our final prayer, the prayer of protection. Come on, here we go. All right, here we go. The light of God surrounds us. I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. I am. The love of God, the power of God protects us. I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever God is, I am and all is well. Amen, 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 e punto. Thank you, everyone. Thank Happy you. Tuesday. Thank you, Happy everyone. Tuesday. Love we'll you all. all. Bye bye. Bye. Beautiful day. Namaste. Bye.